Um, and so next we are going to um, have, I'm not sure. Just again, if you have any anyone who's uh, speaking, if you're having issues and needing to go uh, sooner, let us know. But if not, then we are going to, and this is the international portion of our program. Um, and just so you know, it is so late. We started at 1, a, 1 p.m. Western time because four months ago when we were starting to plan this, we thought we'd be watching Frank's movie for the last two hours, sitting, chilling, and all you on the East Coast would be fine. Uh, turned out a little different, um, but we're delighted. So, um, Nuri, Frank, you are going to introduce um, Nuri, please. Okay, thank, thanks, Rachel. Uh, my friend Nuri Ranaki was born in Iran. After the CIA coup in Iran in 1953, her family, <clears throat> excuse me, was forced to migrate to the United States. She got her master's in economics from the University of Wisconsin. She's been a member of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom for 50 years. She was a member of the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. She established the Free Palestine Organization in Hawaii and she was the founder of Education Not Incarceration in Oakland. And she is the co current co-founder of the U.S. Department of Peace. Nuri is a fantastic woman. She's bought thousand copies of Addicted War for me. She gives them away for free, everybody. And she's such a wonderful woman. Nuri, are you there? Yes. Thank you, thank you for... And Al. I, yeah, I really wanted to save you all that time. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, Frank. Uh, and uh, for Go, but there are some interesting things that I would like to yeah mention. I was born in Iran, and when I was 10 years old or younger, Mossadegh came to power. And so during Mossadegh, British, of course, because of our oil, it always is because of resources that United States wants to go and rob those countries, the same as uh, uh, everywhere else. So British um, went to war against Iran and uh, US didn't come to help Iran. So we are used to sanctions from 70 years ago when I was a child. And uh, then um, uh, CIA, then Do Dr. Mossadegh nationalized oil, which was Iranian resource and others. So uh, US during Eisenhower, Eisenhower, I was 13 years old, they carried coup d'etat in 1953 against Dr. Mossadegh and overthrow him. Um, while Mossadegh asked Eisenhower if he could uh, go between United between Iran and British and be mediator and make peace. And Eisenhower not only didn't do that, but uh, they also sanctioned Iran, didn't help financially, and they carried coup d'etat in 1953. Well, I was very young. My whole family had to migrate to United States. My brother was almost executed. He was physician, just graduating, and he was about to uh, be killed that a friend of us saved, saved him. Then we had to come to US. Then I, when I, and I became active in United States with American Soviet Friendship Society and um, other, uh, so from childhood I was active. Then um, my father died in 19, um, then when my father died during Shah, who was, Shah became, Shah uh, was put back in power by United States. And the first thing did, our resources was used to attack the FAR, which is uh, Western Yemen. So Yemen that we know the war is going on now, 70 years ago or 60, uh, eight years ago, uh, Shah of Iran with Iranian resources on behalf of United States became gendarme of the region and start killing Middle Eastern, any resistance. And uh, so many 30,000 Tofari people were killed with Iranian money for United States uh, benefit. And then they created Savak and Evin. Savak was famous uh, torture center in Iran. And Evin was the prison 
that um, were uh, imprisoning all progressives. And I never forget as a child that there was a um, music um, uh, that was created by someone that they were going to execute him. And he was uh, asking his child, his daughter, kiss me goodbye for the last time. This became a music for Iranian for so many, many years of so many that they were executed by Shah. Um, and kiss me goodbye was the famous song of so many that they were. So then I, we had to come to US in US when my father died in 19, uh, 78 as American citizen, I had to go back. And when I went back, they arrested me and put me in solitary confinement in Evan prison. And I thought, wow, am I really that useful and that good that United States or Iranian government um, is afraid of me and putting me in solitary confinement? I was there for two and a half months, but then the revolution was taking place in Iran and they had to get rid of me. I did it worth all that. So, and I would see in prison, I would hear that they would pull the young men, that they would torture them and they couldn't walk. You would hear um, and you could see if I had a little hole in my prison once in a while they wouldn't drop the thing that they were in control to drop it that I couldn't that I couldn't see outside once in a while they would forget and I would look and I would see that they are pulling these political prisoners that they tortured already to take them to their cell after the torture or you know that kind of things that you could witness that I would witness so so regularly when I was in solitary confinement. So then I came to US and then um, then the then um, the revolution happened and when the revolution happened US we had so many leaders from National Front from Dr. Mossadegh during Dr. Mossadegh that they um, were candidate by people to become a uh, new leader. But United States felt at that point that Khomeini, who was enough anti-communist while the revolution was taking place. I, I shouldn't forget to tell you that there was a theater in Abadan that 600 young people that they went for watching movie United States they blocked everything and they burned the whole theater and so many other things. And then at the time of hostage crisis or so-called hostage crisis, I have the book I want to show. Um, you will see that, what did I do with the book? I want to show. Um, uh, during hostage crisis, um, hostages, nothing happened to them, but, and they were, but the bo six books, it was really spy center in Iran, the American embassy, and they shredded the books and Iranian students, they put these shredded together and it's right here. Yeah, they they put the books, they shredded a uh, thing that uh, American embassy, top secret, documents. top secret documents, they put it together and they created six books. This is number four that they translated to Persian. And this is, this alone is what US was doing for so many years in Afghanistan. So, um, yeah, and then also, um, 
when I came to U.S., when hostage crisis, so-called hostage crisis happened, I was saying that send Shah back so that hostages would be released. So they came from CIA, threatened me that they will, they came to my home and said that they have orders to kill me if I continue to talk. I was Medical College of Virginia in Richmond, Virginia. I was studying for my medical record administration. That um, then they had to supposedly college had to protect me. Uh, so now, now and then, um, now what should we really do? I was thinking that we have been to hundreds of countries killing so many, many people. My whole family had to come to U.S. and there are millions of Iranians, not only oil resources, the intelligent and education of all those countries, seven in my family, MDs and PhDs and masters, they all live here and their children was drawn, drawn from uh, those countries and Iran and everywhere else. So I'm hoping that um, uh, what to do would be maybe destination Nicaragua was something that, uh, that Barbara Trent uh, movie made. Uh, Americans were going to Nicaragua and let us make friendship delegations from all those countries, Soviet Union, China, Iran, and bring them here and we go visit them. They would love the people-to-people -people delegations and uh, exchanges and educate. We ed get uh, our education of what, our, what is our government doing around the world. And the nuclear disarmament that 122 countries they passed and now uh, it is ratified. Uh, it's a world thing that we, need, we could focus on and really stop that danger that everybody talked. I wanted to thank you again, uh, Rachel as well, and Frank. It's such a beautiful thing, and I'm going to use these days and weeks for many, many, many people to come. And and by the way, it is New Year, Persian New Year. It's the first, second day of spring. Yesterday was Persian New Year. So happy no rules to all of you. The first day of spring is Persian New Year, and we have half seen, which is seven SS symbolic of uh, love, symbolic of uh, health, symbolic of all of these I put together that maybe I can, I don't know if I can show it to you. Um, here we have, these are, these are the, uh, our seven S's symbolic of, uh, we have fish, apple, uh, greenery and all of these things, symbol of love and peace and harmony and richness and wealth, prosperity. prosperity. Uh, let us <laughs> let us focus on friendship and love and getting together. Thank you so much. I talk too much. <laughs> No, that, that was so beautiful. Thank you so much, Nuri. As part of Peace Weeks in the LA Harbor area, um, Christian Guzman, part of our organizing team, we put on for every Peace Week, we choose a country and we have a whole cultural night and everyone comes to the Zoom or comes to the live meeting when before the pandemic and we share food and we hear stories. And, mm -hmm. and the first one we did was on Iran uh, two or three <laughs> years ago. So we're doing that annually. We're gonna do it much more. It's a beautiful, beautiful way definitely Thank yeah you. softens <laughs> softens hearts <laughs> Thank right. you. eating yeah. together and enjoying mm -hmm. of yeah. course Thank of course that's you. that's what we all want okay thank you so much nuri um frank uh, our next testimony <clears throat> okay thank you nuri and alan thank you so much nuri i love you you know um the woman she's always loving and smiling and happy okay uh, next 